Welcome to the Slugs, Bugs and Dirty Rugs podcast, episode one. Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to my story, first of all. This is the first podcast I've ever done, so hopefully it goes okay. This is the first episode. What we're going to be discussing over the next six episodes is the time where I was homeless, what it was like for me how it became a thing and my feelings before, during and after the event and hopefully you'll get a better understanding of my life. Some of you may have already read the book on the subject which I wrote and and uh, had up for sale for, for a time there. However, this podcast is going to be a more full explanation the book itself i wrote at a time where i had no intention of ever selling it so it probably wasn't as full with as much information as i possibly could have made it so hopefully this will answer any questions that you have and just give you an insight into what it was like for me personally. Not everybody's experiences are the same. So without further ado, let's get started. So the year was 1998 and I was, it may surprise you, but Ironically, this year was one of the best years of my life, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why now. And it may sound a bit stupid, but it, it was a good year in general. I was going to, I was going to see a lot of football. I was just enjoying myself. Basically, it was a really good year. I was going up to see the football. My team won the cup final, and I went. To, to see them play in the final it was a brilliant time and I had amazing memories from the first half of the year it was like the best that I've ever had probably maybe that you might be thinking now that perhaps I had too much fun and that's why the second half of the year didn't quite go as I might have liked it to, you know, that's maybe how that's how I ended up. I don't think it is the case, but maybe it was a contributory factor anyway. What happened during that whole period of time and leading up to it, a couple of years prior to that, my my dad left and like my my parents split up and my dad left and went off somewhere don't know where can't remember I think he went to America so my mum was having a hard time took her some time to get over it in the meantime though she she started going out and she met this guy who they eventually got together I believe they ended up getting married Um, but during that time the the whole the, the living situation wasn't great I was I was struggling obviously my dad had just left I mean I wasn't young I was how old was I He left when I was 18 and through to about 20. That's the kind of time that we're talking about. And he was, this guy was not really the best. Not, not the, not the worst. I'm, I'm not trying to paint anybody in a negative light, although it might come across that way. He was kind of like... I always got the feeling he was was making snide comments, like under his breath sort of thing. He didn't quite understand the family dynamic 
by all accounts he had two daughters of his own and he didn't get on with them and he didn't get on with me or my brother he didn't get on with two well me and my younger brother the older ones were self-sustaining so he got he kind of understood them a bit more because they were out doing their thing and the us two younger ones were not quite there yet and to be honest I'm speaking for myself I was quite a, a shy child I still am now but I wasn't able to sustain myself I was not able to I wasn't one for going out I wasn't one for I mean I I had a job then I didn't have a job uh, and I, I couldn't get another job because I, I was shit at interviews and all this, right? I mean, by shit at interviews, I mean I couldn't talk to people. I and literally, I clam up if talking to people and I, I didn't know how to talk to people at all, right? And so going back to this guy, my mum my mom was dating and he was kind of making all these little comments and then I started kind of avoiding him like in the house like if he was coming up the stairs I'd just sort of head back to my bedroom and if I if I was going back home to the house if I'd been out to the shops or something I'd come back home and if I saw his car there I'd kind of sneak up into my bed into my bedroom I just wouldn't it was a very awkward situation and then and I think my mum was going through apart from that she was going through some financial difficulties one of which partly was her own doing to be honest kind of I mean, maybe it's a bit harsh to, to, to lay the blame completely on my mum. Because she was overall a good person. She brought us up really well. And I felt like that I had a really good childhood. I had no complaints whatsoever. But what happened was we decided as the family to, to buy a house... Well, no, we didn't buy the house. <laughs> Sorry. My my eldest brother bought a house for us to live in, okay? Because he has a good job. He went to university and he got a good job. And hence why he doesn't get any hate, basically. And he bought a house so that we could live in it. But whilst we were in it, my mum decided to try and claim for housing benefit which I think is a quite a grey area because was she claiming was she, I can't remember she can't have been paying no On, honestly can't remember but somebody must have been paying a mortgage I can't remember if my mum was paying rent or not so please don't throw any shade at that because I, I honestly can't remember and but what happened then was the she got turned down housing benefit because apparently if your like if your family are the, the landlords then you're not entitled to it even if you are paying rent to them you're not entitled or you weren't entitled at that point so that left my mum out of pocket she'd also quit her job that she was working at in order to go to university it's kind of like a, a new thing you know trying to basically chuck away her entire life you know that she had with my dad and so she quit her job she went to university to study a, I'm not quite sure what but then she after after the first year of university she decided that she couldn't afford to to keep doing that so she stopped doing that but that left her without a job and 
that left the the whole situation there with like with a lack of funds and um then that kind of filtered down to the rest of us in terms of needing to pay our way um now this is gonna this is where people are gonna start hating on me because i realize now that perhaps i wasn't quite as like forthcoming with with paying my way as i should have been because i yeah i grew up quite entitled i guess we had quite a a nice lifestyle growing up and you know we didn't get everything that we wanted but we, we didn't really want for anything so yeah but I was only at the time I was only getting like um, job seekers benefits and that wasn't a lot and my mum wanted all of it because that's all well she she divvied up how much we were supposed to pay each and the amount that she wanted from me turned out to be more slightly more than I actually had per week so I ended up kind of not <laughs> not I'm sorry this is not I'm trying to not be like I'm trying to not paint myself in the best light, but I also don't want people to to despise me. So I need to be completely honest with everything that I say. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So I would give over most, and and I wanted some for myself. So I think the only this comes then down to the the only time I the only thing that I could do then I think this was a whole point actually from my mum's perspective is that if she takes if she forces the situation then he'll have to get a job that was the the, the thing right so but I couldn't do that <laughs> Uh, this comes back to what I was saying before that I was really really shy and I could not talk to people in an interview and I found it really really difficult to to get a job at all in fact I've never got a job through an actual interview in my life it's difficult because you've got to prove that you are better than tens of tens of people that are also going for the same job so yeah that wasn't me and that being said i've not not worked um i've the, the jobs that i used to get were purely through agency work so all you have to do with an agency job if you haven't been for one is you have to prove to the agency that you have the skills required they don't care about your interview technique and you don't have to be the most the most like forthcoming socially in the world you just need to be able to do the job that they send you to and the so the basically looking for one person and you you go for that particular job and then they either give it to you if you're good enough or, or they don't fortunately i had the skills to do jobs i just didn't have very good interviewing techniques or social skills wasn't very good socially so this was the whole thing where the money was at like was, was very tight and i was struggling my mum was struggling and i was by my own admission okay i wasn't the most um i wasn't the the most what's the word when you you like to work <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't the best worker right I was quite lazy. I still am quite lazy. But back then I was 
especially lazy. And that being said, I did manage to get a job, as, but it was through an agency. And I worked in this particular job for eight months, which for me is quite good, especially if agency work is usually quite short term. It was supposed to only last a few weeks. And if you, sometimes if you're good enough and you show that you're good enough, then they extend it and it lasted eight months. Unfortunately, and um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, when it came to this particular, the time, it, when it came to me ending this particular job, I say me ending it is because it was essentially me that ended it. And my mum still doesn't actually know this. And not many people do because it was bloody stupid. I'm sorry. I, I thought it was stupid, stupid then. I still think it's stupid now. Okay. Um, so I was working and then one day, one morning, I was, I woke up late for work, right? I, I woke up late. I'd gone to bed late. So it was my own fault that I slept in. Um, I stayed up late. I think I was up to about midnight or one o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I'd had some drinks, but that's not an excuse. That's what people do, right? But... I woke up late, and usually most people, when they wake up late, it, it's a, it's an issue, but it's not the end of the world. However, for me, it was the end of the world. I ended up, I couldn't call in to work. I was too afraid to phone in to work to say, I'm, I'm not coming in, or I'm it or whatever whatever excuse it is or I'm even going to be late into work I was too afraid to do that it was afraid fear shyness leading to fear that's that's how I experienced life when I was younger and still do ironically but that's how I that's what happened I was I was too afraid to phone in to work to let them know that I couldn't turn up. And then the next day, I didn't want to just show up because, you know, I hadn't phoned in the, the day before. So I just didn't didn't go. And eventually I just didn't go. Day after day, I just didn't go. And that kind of led to a situation where I then didn't have a job. And it was self-inflicted. It was stupid. I think it was absolutely ridiculous. It was my own doing. And to this day, I still don't believe that actually happened. But what happened then was I couldn't tell my mum that this is what had happened. Because she would have gone mental. And she wouldn't have understood it. And now I was in a position where I didn't... What I was doing every day was I was going out to work sorry I was going to the job center every single day trying desperately to find a new job before anyone found out that I didn't have a job and uh, it didn't work out that way in fact it got to the point where I <laughs> I bumped into one of them in the in the street and I um that was always gonna happen let's be fair was <laughs> it was always gonna be a thing and I bumped into my mum I think and that was that or hell broke loose I got a little bit of you know earache from <laughs> from the um the backlash and I think I lasted, this was definitely July 98. I think I lasted maybe a week after that before my mum came and told me that I had to leave the house. And don't get, 
Don't get excited. This isn't the time that she kicked me out. This was the precursor to me being homeless. I was kicked out of the house first in July, right? And uh, this is something that not a lot of people know because it's not in my book. I was... I was told to leave and I'm trying to think what it was that I did. I remember the, f <laughs> the first night. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't... On that night when I was... Um, I was told to leave I remember the only thing that I did was I slept in the the shed in the back of the house it's a really tiny and cramped and dark place and it was just so uncomfortable and yeah that's all I remember there but I remember then the next day in the morning I thought there's no way in God's given earth I can go through that again so I went to my friend's house and I told him what had happened and his mum allowed me to stay at the house, at their house, which was very, very nice. And um, during that week, because I was, I was, I stayed at his house for a week and at the end of the week his mum spoke to my mum because they used to be really good friends they're not anymore and they they came to an arrangement where I could move back home so I did and it was agreed that I was gonna do better right so yeah, that's what happened there. The other thing that I didn't mention or I haven't mentioned yet is that during that year leading up to now, I had been going to, well, I'd been working as I told you, but I was also doing night school. I was working, I was basically working all day and then I was going to night school two nights a week to do like A levels at night school at college. And with the, the intention of going to university at the end of it, I'd gotten a placement at university with the, it's like a conditional placement where if I get my grades, then I would be off to university, which is what I wanted to do. And, but I found it really difficult. It, I mean, if you if you ever work full time and then go to college at night, it's it's very hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's very tiring, both physically and mentally. It's really tiring. And I, you know, I studied as much as I could. I did a lot of, you know, I did as well as I could do. I feel I did anyway. And when it came to the exams, I studied and I. I tried my best, I really, really did try. I ended up getting, in that August, because this was just after I'd moved back home after being out for a week, and that August I got the results, and my English paper I passed. I got 56%, which was, I needed, uh, I needed 55% in order to, to get the grade for for university and when it came but when it came to my maths that I took I only got I think I got 35% or something sounds really bad but as I said it, it was really hard work to do and I needed again I need needed 55% to get into university so I didn't get my grades and that was very disappointing but I think it was more disappointing for my mum because <laughs> she kind of saw me going off to university as a an out basically I was struggling at home obviously but I often wonder if I if I had actually got into university and gone there 
how would my life have turned out? I feel like that is the the turning point, like the the crossroads in your life, where if something different has happened, maybe your life would turn out differently, like that movie, um, Sliding Doors. If you've seen that, it's like that, you know something slightly different happens in your life and your life turns out completely different but we'll never know but I do have regrets and I do feel like that could have been the catalyst anyway yeah I didn't so that was August and things were not improving at home and then a month later September it was it came the official final days of me living at home. That's the end of episode one. I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to say. Please come back next week for episode two, where we're going to be talking about how I became homeless and what happened in the first days of my homelessness. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye.